<laughs> Isn't this fun? Uh, isn't this fun? Um, well, there we go. <laughs> Sorry if you heard that, everyone. <laughs> Well, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm not really sure if I'm live right now, but uh, had some buffering issues. Uh, let's take a look here. Uh, someone let me know in one of the chats if they can hear me or not. But, um, yeah, I, uh, I'm very excited to be doing this particular stream tonight. Uh, yeah, does someone let me know if they can hear me or not? Um, it's been a very tremendously hot day out here, uh, but um, some birds at my house finally left there. Well, let's see here. Frog de Bon says, yep, so good. People can hear me. Yeah, some uh, birds left their nest and were huddled on on my front porch so that was always fun to see this time of year but uh let me just uh check make sure everything's good so good evening um my name is nicholas bernhard and tonight we're going to talk about the next version of nantucket ebooks this is the biggest change in a version uh since uh, version one and I am immensely excited to share it with everyone tonight. We have a lot to cover. This has a, been a very big update and a lot to go through. First off, a big thank you to my patrons, John B., Tom B., oh, can't hear you. Oh, please talk louder. All right. First of all, a big thank you to my patrons, 
uh, John B., Tom B., uh, Marcus W., uh, you are a big help to making this possible. If anyone else watching this is not on Patreon, you can please uh, ask you to please support my work at patreon.com slash Nantucket ebooks and also at LibraPay, which is an open source crowdfunding site, uh, LibraPay.com slash Nantucket ebooks. Please like and subscribe. Uh, you can send questions about tonight's stream uh, to the YouTube chat. You can also ask questions on Twitter or Mastodon. Uh, I'm also on IRC, and I've got one person in the IRC chat right now, and that's always fun. So that's irc.libra.chat, um, and the channel is Nantucket eBooks. I'm in there right now. So lots of ways that you can ask questions, and I'd be, love to answer some of your questions about this latest update. As I mentioned before, the mission of Nantucket eBooks, my mission, is to make it easier for authors uh, to create and share the best ebooks on the planet. And this was something I elaborated on a bit last night uh, when I was on Mastodon. Something I wrote uh, Imagine an ebook advanced enough to include built in audiobooks and controls for font size and line height, yet simple enough to be read in links or even by curl request. Imagine an ebook informed by classical typography and designed for maximum accessibility. Imagine it all ran on GPL 3.0 software with no, D, with no DRM. And tonight, that's what I'm excited to show you. I want to make an ebook that an author would be proud to share with their readers. And this is a big step toward that goal. Let's do a little recap of the progress that's been made so far. Uh, version 1 was uh, Ishmael. All versions are named after the crew of the Pequod from Moby Dick. So version 1 was Ishmael. In version 1, we, in, uh, we introduced the online ebook editor Arrowhead, which lets you preview your ebooks as you're writing them. We introduced keyboard controls for the audiobooks. Uh, we introduced orient, uh, image orientation, uh, indentation of poetry. Uh, so you can have indents for uh, verses. You can have drop caps, flippable images, something I could probably try to show you today. Uh, text resizing, uh, it became a free software project, so all the source code is licensed under the GPL. And error detection, so if you make a mistake in your ebook, Arrowhead will let you know. Version 2 was Queequeg. Uh, in that one, we introduced the self-contained file structure. So all the assets, all the images and files for an ebook, are contained within one folder. It's not linked to a central file. That makes it easier to download for offline reading. Uh, there was a rewrite of the style sheet to make it easier to expand on. Uh, we introduced advanced typography, and that was a, that's a really neat thing. So um, like. Instead of straight quotes, you'll have curly quotes. It'll curve to one side on the start of the quote, curve to the other on the other side, and that's very important to get that book feel. That it's not some you know a lot of computer, um, a lot of writing on computers is stuck in the typewriter days where you just had straight quotes or straight apostrophes. This is bringing it more toward the bound book. There is improved support for alt text. And alt text is where if you can't, if an image doesn't load or it's been prevented from loading, there's text that can explain what was in the image. And that's very important, uh, particularly for people who are hard of seeing. Uh, they, can, they can read that. Uh, and it can also, you know, if you're on a slow bandwidth, you can load it up. Uh, you can just uh, forgo the images and read the alt text. We improved the dark mode by taking advantage of settings within the browser. So we have our wonderful dark mode controls, as always. But if you set dark mode in your operating system or your browser, it will listen to that too. So it will integrate seamlessly with your browser experience. And lastly, we included uh, serif fonts. So you can have a choice as an author 
if you want to present your book in a serif font or a sans serif font. Sometimes uh, it can make a difference based on what you're writing. Version 3 was a small but important update, so it was named after Pip, who was the smallest of the crew. Uh, we introduced an all-new audiobook interface that was much easier and had much better cross-browser support. And uh, we also introduced uh, PHP to track page views, send a signal to the server that a book was viewed. So that was version 3, pip. Now version 2 uh, was named after Tashtago. And that's what we'll be talking about tonight. Three main things I want to talk about with version 4. First is better accessibility. Second is a new style sheet. And third is how these updates make this the most flexible ebook ever. Let's bring up some of my notes here. So let's talk about accessibility a bit. I'll show you what we've been up to. So I'm over here now in Arrowhead, which is our editor. You can find this by going to nantucketebooks.com slash editor. And I'll reload the page. It starts off so you, you write your text on the left side, and, it's, and it presents on the right side. And if you're not familiar with this, uh, these e my ebooks are written in a markup language called Shanty. Uh, Shanty makes it really it makes it easy to write quickly. You need to know about five different symbols, and you can get going. And instead of worrying about how the e the book will look, and fiddling around with fonts and that sort of thing, uh, you just write the text, and then this program uh, create uh, will render it for you. It it worries about how it will look. So over here we have our syntax, and uh, up here we have our uh, different commands. So run will generate the preview of the ebook, and here's a preview ebook I've got here. Uh, down here is our menu. Now uh, there's a lot of nice interactive features in these ebooks, and now they're even easier to use. It used to be that uh, depending on what device you were on, the menu would display in different ways. It might appear at the top or on the side. Now it's just going to be at the bottom. And I've made another big change, which is that it's not I've taken away the menu icons and just have it all be text. So if I click down here, everyone can see that. And I'm going to move my uh my oh, not that one. <laughs> going to move me. There we are. And I'll, uh, I'm also going to shrink the page a little bit. You're going to see a little black down there. That's okay. Nope, nope. And I'm going to do that. Okay. So now you can see the menu. Here we are. Uh, so it's all text. We used to have icons, little skeuomorphs as they're called. But you can see here, this one will collapse the menu. And then we click Open Menu again. Back to Home will send us to the main page of the site. Table of Contents will jump to the Table of Contents for the ebook if it exists. And if there wasn't a Table of Contents for the book, such as a short story, that item, uh, the Table of Contents one, won't appear. Then we have our uh, Dark Mode, uh, the most satisfying button on the internet. Click that and watch it all change very nicely. Uh, then we have our notes mode, uh, the font. Uh, I can show that now. Uh, so if you are in sans serif here, click that. And now it is in a serif font. And this serif font is called Charter. It was uh, designed to look really good on a computer screen. And it was made from the guy, the guy who did uh, Georgia and Verd Verdana. It's a very nice serif font. And I, um, we've really, I really enjoyed having it. But anyway, you can click that, and you can go between serif and sans serif. It's all very nice. And then we have our, our buttons for bigger text, smaller text, line height, and 
we can reset all we can put all our settings back to the defaults on this one this last one there's the font toggle again so this is the new menu uh, the reason I took out the icons is because um, honestly I was told that no one had the, the faintest idea what any of the icons meant and uh, I, I was sorry to hear that but I want people to enjoy these interactive features and not be bewildered by symbols like they're exploring some ancient ruin or something uh, so uh, now it'll just say what it is uh, so like it'll just say collapse menu and or instead of a light bulb for example it just says toggle dark mode like that so I hopefully that'll be a lot clearer for people and uh, a little more consistent experience because it'll always be at the bottom uh, over here I've got an ebook prepared for you this using version 4 this is the call of the wild by Jack London another thing we've got is uh, full keyboard controls this is something people asked to bring back in and I've really worked hard to you know get something that is quite usable so now if you're on a keyboard uh, like a laptop or desktop you can hit escape and it'll open and close the menu for you and then you can hit the left and right arrows to go back and forth select the item that you want to use so let's say I wanted to do the dark mode again I select it here you see it's highlighted in a, uh, a red border hit enter and now it's uh, brings up the dark mode again if I wanted to do the font I go over to font does it for me there so that's all the key those are keyboard controls now what about the audiobook player if you remember in version 3 we introduced this new simplified system so here is our audiobook it's all full screen now uh, if I want to use the keyboard to control the audiobook um, all those are the same so P will play or pause chapter 1 of the call of the wild this is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. I'll pause that again. By the way, if you're looking for something to read, um, this audiobook uh, for Call of the Wild, it's from LibriVox, and it's narrated by the great Phil Chenever, who is, um, I've listened to a lot of his narrations. I highly recommend it. I will, uh, I'll put out a link to this, uh, to this ebook later, but it's a, Fantastic. I actually listened to the whole thing in the ebook and uh, during my commutes the past couple of weeks, and I really enjoyed it. And then, so uh, the hyphen and equals key, also plus and minus on your keyboard, that'll skip chapters for you. And uh, then you can skip uh, forward and backward by a minute or by 15 seconds as well. And then escape to close that so the keyboard controls are quite robust and uh, that's another part of accessibility for the ebooks uh, we talked about the old serif the serif font we have included but there's a new font as well and that's this one for sans serif, for sans serif I have included a new font this is known as uh, Atkinson Hyperlegible. It is it was produced by the American Braille Institute uh, to be a, a font that's very readable. That each uh, each character is very distinct from another. So, for example, lowercase i, lowercase l, and the number one are all very clearly distinct. Um, I think it looks really great. It comes with an open font license, so I can use it and I think we're gonna try to make it the the default sans serif font for these ebooks I think it looks really good I've had good feedback on it and you can see here how it looks in a header quite a modern little font and so that's another part of accessibility I want to make sure people get the best reading experience possible 
Let's look at some other stuff in the menu. Um, here you've got, uh, let's talk, so text resizing. Um, as you know, you can uh, go down here. Let's make the text bigger. And as I click that bigger text button, it's making everything larger. You can make it quite a bit larger. And then I can also go down and make it smaller to make it bigger. Or if I didn't want to skip down, I just wanted to go back to normal, I can hit Restore Defaults. It brings everything back the way it was. We've added something else too. Line height. The uh, spacing be between the lines. So if I tap more line height here, you'll see it's going to add that line height as well. And if I play around with bigger text as well, that works too. Now a fair question would be why do this if you're in a browser, don't you have text resizing? Well, yes and no. Um, if, you're if you're on a laptop, like I am now, you definitely, well let's restore our defaults again. See, it's very simple to, if you, if, it, if you get it all convoluted, you just click that button and you can make it go back. Um, for example, I can hit Control Plus and that will use the browser's text resizing. Make it bigger, you can make it smaller too. So that's all pretty simple and a lot of people do that. Now I found that uh, the, the experience on mobile is not quite as straightforward. If you want to do text resizing like on an iPad, it, your results may vary. Uh, Safari has pretty good resizing. Um, what was another one? Edge actually had pretty good resizing. Uh, Firefox is really good at it on, on a iOS. Uh, but Chrome won't always do it and Opera has like no options on iOS as of today. Uh, so you're not always going to great get a great text resizing experience if you're on a mobile browser. So for those people, I think it's very important to have these options for text resizing. Uh, you can't just trust that you'll be able to use your keyboard to set those controls. Uh, but so now and now it's an even deeper experience. Uh, now it's going you can control font size and line height separately and reset everything if uh, you need to. So um, actually I think I'll probably expand the range of resizing that you can do. Uh, I might double it actually uh, so that you can get the text really really big. As big as you need. I think that's going to be the next step. That'll be in 4.1. Uh, another thing for accessibility is how this would look in a text-based browser. Uh, sometimes those are very useful. Um, people on low bandwidth connections will sometimes just load the text of a, of a, a website. If you have a visual impairment, um, a text-based browser will help you with reading the... It, you can connect that to a screen reading application to, to read through books or to read through a web page. So for those people, um, uh, these e uh, the, in version 4, the ebooks look really good. And that's something I'll talk about in the next section here. Word for behind the scenes. Uh, so as I've talked about before, there are three main parts to this platform. The first is a program that will take that will read through your markup language and produce the HTML file. And that program is, is a script called GAM. And so that will produce the HTML file. Then you have the style sheet, which present which controls how the ebook will look on different devices. And then finally you have a program called Ahab, which controls all the interactive features. We'll go back to so all this stuff like the dark mode and the audiobook player, that's all controlled by Ahab, because he's the captain, of course. Um, now those uh, different roles are much more clearly defined. It used to be that I built some of the HTML that the interactive parts would use, and that was part of the original HTML file. 
that in version four, that's no longer the case. All the interactive parts are in Ahab, and those are built at runtime. So that's, if you imagine you have your HTML, then the interactive parts, is that's a layer that you add on top of that. Um, by, by separating like that and having that those layers, one result of that is that the text-based experience is never is at its best right now. So here, um, unfortunately, uh, the so the streaming software I'm using can't bring up the terminal, so I could, or else I could show you what it looks like. But this website will sort of emulate what it looks like. So um, if you look here, this is what it's going to look like in a text-based browser. And it's all very clean. And because there's no... Uh, there's nothing of the interactive parts that get loaded but never used. You're not going to see like a weird element that doesn't seem to have a, a purpose to it. Everything uh, is just the text, which is what you want in a text browser. So you're going to get a really good experience there. The other thing you're going to get is that if you, dis if you want to read without running any JavaScript, you're going to get a very good experience with that. Um, it's uh, not going to break anything. So if you're someone who wants to, you know, doesn't trust JavaScript, you can run the, these, you're going to get a great reading experience with JavaScript disabled. The JavaScript is just something that enhances it, but not running it won't detract from it. And um, like one example of that, if you don't, if you disable JavaScript, You'll still and there's an audiobook associated with it. You'll still have links to the audiobook files that are presented to you with JavaScript disabled, and you can go and click through those and listen. So you're not and uh, the dark mode will work still if uh, if you do it through your browser. So um, great flexibility uh, in that area. Let's go to the next part here. So for accessibility, we've got our new text-based menu, full keyboard controls for the menu and the audiobook player. We have a new sans serif font, Atkinson Hyper Legible, is its uh, verbose name. And uh, we have improved controls for font size and line height. And I can expand those uh, based on your feedback. If we want, how, you can tell me how big you want it to be able to go. The next thing is the new style sheet. Uh, I've, this has been a recent update. I, I just felt the need to go through and make it more efficient and I uh, was very proud of what I was able to accomplish in that area. The new style sheet that these ebooks run is just under 8 kilobytes. Uh, for just for comparison, uh, it is much smaller. Uh, the the source file for the new style sheet is smaller than the compressed one from the previous version. So it's not quite as uh, small as some of these minimalist style sheets you'll see. But compared to what a lot of uh, websites will deliver to you, where they have to actually compile the style sheets down to make them small enough. Uh, this is going to be much more efficient and uh, it's going to be easier to maintain as well. As uh, Terry Davis always said, if you scale down, it doesn't get good, it gets better. So we talked about accessibility in the style sheet. I'll show you a few other things we've got now. Uh, let's talk a little bit about poetry. Now, the way poetry works in these ebooks, uh, I'm in the editor right now. You start a line of a verse with a backtick here, that and that's a line with no indentation. If you wanted to do uh, have it indent one tab, you would put a one there, and you wrap it in the backtick, and then you end a verse with two backticks. So let's write a little poetry. We'll do the famous uh, purple cow poem 
by Gellert Burgess, one of the great American poems, our version of uh, Edward Lear. So, um, and we'll indent every other line. I never saw a purple cow. We'll indent this one. I never wish to see one. But I can tell you anyhow. We'll end the line with two back ticks, and, but we'll indent it as well. I'd rather see than be one. And now we'll click Run. And if you see on our right side, I will use our bigger text option here to bring it up for you. And uh, add a little line height, so that should be a little easier to see. And uh, now it's going. So this, what's different now is that this is all one paragraph that we have line breaks within. It used to be that each, uh, it would process each line as a separate paragraph, and that was a mistake. It never really worked. But now, each of these is. This is all one paragraph, and we have span elements for each one, and they're being broken up by break elements. So it'll process a lot clearer. And uh, so I'll just show you here if we uh, replace the ones over here with twos, you can see, oh, it re rendered. Uh, but you'll see that it, it made it bigger, it put it in more indentation there. So if you're into poetry, uh, this is. Um, We've really improved the uh, how verse poetry works on the the on these ebooks, which is something I'm very excited about. Um, our first commercial release uh, earlier this year from Nantucket ebooks was a collection of poems by Ali Flint, who was the poet laureate of a town called Lafayette, Colorado, and uh, so we did a whole book of her poetry. And then I also did a collection of the, the famous poetry book, Ebony and Crystal, by Clark Ashton Smith, who's uh, kind of the poet version of H.P. Lovecraft. Uh, so I love putting poetry in these ebooks, and now it has never looked better. And I'll show you here. Let's put it in a different font. So you thought your poem would look better in a serif font, for example. And now, uh, drop caps is another thing. Uh, so a drop cap is where you have the first letter of the first paragraph uh, be much larger. And it's also sometimes known as an initial. I'll show you what I mean. So for our first paragraph, I'm going to go over here and add drop cap. If I run it over here, you'll see on this side, it's made the drop cap. Let's go down to the next chapter, add another one. So this is an L. Run that. So there's the big L. And if I was to toggle the font, you'll see it'll change that as well. The difference here is that we used to isolate the first uh, letter uh, in, a, in a, its own span element and then style that. More efficient way to do that is a uh, CSS pseudo selector called first letter, where it just will work on the first letter. And you can uh, adjust it a lot easier in that way. And so that's something I'm looking forward to is continuing to make the drop caps look better because that's always a, a way to sort of make your book feel very special. Then the last thing which uh, I'll just talk about is how the HTML looks. Um, so I, when I first developed GAM, uh, the, the text parsing program, it would, t when, when it's building out the elements, it just adds one element after the other. So what you end up with is a big long line of text, many, many thousands of lines long. and uh, the browser can handle that fine. It's just reading through it and uh, presents it on the page. But for a person to read that, like the, the source file, 
the the raw HTML. It was uh, very complicated and it never looked really right. It made it harder to debug things. Now the uh, the it, it adds quite a bit of overhead, but each uh, uh, the the parsing program will add in under the hood all of the necessary line breaks and spaces. Um, as if you were writing the HTML by hand. And what that means is that if there's a if you want to make an adjustment to your ebook, uh it it's you can open it up and read it and it will look really nice. Um you'll be able to understand what's going on and you can make adjustments and and actually that's ended up helping me in the development because I can uh, switch from source files to minified files and try different uh links or I can make edits and test out new features. Uh, so if you wanted, to, if you were to like make a curl request uh, for people from Mastodon watching this, if you were to do a curl request, um, just pull the, down the raw HTML file into your command line. It's going to look really nice. Uh, so uh, this might be. I uh, can't really think of many eBooks where you can get this very nice interactive experience like you would get on a, a Kindle, but with open but with free software. Or you could read it on a on in a text browser and it'll look great. Or you could even just pull down the red HTML and that'll look great. Um I can't think of many other places that you're gonna get that kind of flexibility. So to recap, more accessible than ever. A more efficient style sheet, and that's putting it mildly. Uh, better poetry parsing, and really clean and readable HTML. That is what you're getting in version 4. Some other improvements that have been made to the site. Uh, I've decided to no longer use PHP to track page views. In the previous version, it was a PHP file, and there would be a little small script it would go to the server and just you know, increment a counter that this book was read. Um, that worked out fine, uh, but uh, there's a way to do that. You don't, really don't need PHP to do that. Um, I've, I've decided to put my efforts into going through the access logs because the server already tracks every request made to it. And so I'm going to just learn, um, I've been going through the process of learning how to read those logs and make reports from those. So that'll be a I think a better way, uh, and you also get more information. I can tell uh, what trackers are using the site and that sort of thing. Um, also, on the subject of trackers, I have finally added a robots.txt file to the site, which uh, should cut down on unwanted traffic to the site and just give a few ground rules to crawlers that are from search engines that are using the site. Those are two other things that I think are pretty big. And there's a lot more to that as well. Um, something I forgot to put down here is that we'll have a way to track versions of ebooks. So if an ebook gets updated, you know about it. And we'll be doing that just by uh, using some cryptography, uh, uh, what's called a SHA 256 sum. So it'll be a little string of numbers and letters that could only be produced by one particular version of a file. And so we can make a list of those and you can see uh, that'd be a way if you could see, well, is the ebook I'm reading the official one? And you can go and compare numbers. Um, that's something we're working on, that I'm working on. So if you want to look at this, uh, this is all up on the website right now. You can check out all of the things we've covered tonight by going to nantucketebooks.com slash versions. You can look at the updates throughout the history of the platform. You can also go to nantucketebooks.com slash software licenses where you can read, you can look at the minified files, the licensing for them, and the original source code. Which also, um, because my ebooks are compatible with uh, the GNU LibreJS extension produced by the Free Software Foundation. Yeah, um, the very few interact, I don't think any interactive ebook is that transparent. And you can read it in the browser. 
which I think is much more convenient. So I'll have links to all the source code for all the software we discussed tonight there. Thank you for listening, and I'll take a look now at uh, what sort of questions or hope I didn't uh, have technical difficulties as much as I did last time. Sorry if the lighting's a little odd. It's a sunset over here. Let's just see here. Um, excellent question here from uh, someone on IRC. Uh, what new books are you planning to have featured on Nantucket eBooks? Very good question. Um, uh, well, I always, uh, actually, I can tell you about a couple things that I'm very excited about. Um, um, next week, we'll be releasing the uh, next issue of Quarter Up, which is a, mag a newsletter about pinball and arcade and vintage arcade gaming. I've got a lot of, uh, got some great articles in this one, uh, one about uh, the legal woes of Miss Pac-Man, which is much more in-depth than you could have ever imagined. Uh, let's see here. Another one. Uh, let's see. We have uh, some great articles from Buffalo in this issue. One about uh, sort of his pinball days in the, the San Joaquin Valley. And one about uh, a very early Taito video game called Chack and Pop, which is from a new writer uh, for the newsletter uh, Leland. And Chack and Pop ended up having a, um, it ended up punching high above its weight level. Uh, because uh, it didn't really sell well, but um, the main character became sort of an unofficial mascot for Taito and had an influence on uh, some of the later Bobble games, like, uh, I want to get this right this time, like Bubble Bobble and Puzzle Bobble, um, which are uh, the latter of which is called Bust-A-Move in uh, the U.S. So those are some really great articles that are coming out in quarter up next week uh some other books uh we have a book uh from uh riley duffield if you have been reading books on our site he did some excellent short stories including one i'm very fond of called true love's kiss uh sort of a, uh, a very interesting fairy tale uh and which i have mentioned in a prior live stream he has a book coming out uh, that I'm working on him, that I'm, I'm editing right now, uh, called The Woe Thief. And I think it's absolutely fantastic. It's a, it's a novel, and it asks a very interesting question, uh, which is that if you had the ability, it, well, if somebody had the ability to take away another person's pain and guilt, would that make people better or worse? Would that improve people or... Uh, like worsen people, and I I think the book explores that within a very imaginative fantasy world. I, I've never really come across. I don't think you've ever read a fantasy setting quite like this one. Uh, so I'm very excited. That one will be coming out in October. I'm also pleased to say that Buffalo has another book coming out. If you've I uh, hope you've read his book, or or checked it out at least, uh, Tales of a Metal Fisherman which is Stories in the Life of a Repo Man. Uh, that one is really great. Um, but he's got a, a new book coming out called uh, Moments Out of Time, which is a novel about um, the experience of living with amnesia. Um, and this book uh, is, is another one that I, I can't wait to get out to people. I think this... It's a book that could really change the way people think about amnesia, what it is, uh, and it, it does it within a, a very interesting narrative. Uh, uh, there's a lot of very popular books I could compare it to, but I don't want to spoil too much. And then um, there's another one that we're not 
that I'm not quite ready to announce yet. Um, I've been asked to hold off on announcing it, but uh, to say it's it's a reflection on some of the, what, what the the trauma, honestly, that we've all gone through in the past few years uh, in terms of uh, plagues and uh, political events. Uh, it's very uh, it's quite dark and quite funny, and uh, but that's one that I am also looking forward to releasing uh, when the opportunity arises. So those are three books, and in addition, I'm always looking to put new public domain works on the site. One in particular I can tell you about is um, I'll be publishing the short story uh, The Affair at Grover Station, which was by Pulitzer Prize winner Willa Cather. Uh, she was one of the great writers about the American West with stories like uh, O oh, Pioneers and My Antonia, Death Comes to the Archbishop. This is a little short, suspenseful story that is what takes place in a, a town called Grover, which is in the Pawnee grasslands of Colorado, a very beautiful but very remote area. And Grover is a real town. I will be going to Grover next month, August 26th, that's about a month away, and reading that at a town celebration. Um, and that's something I'm really looking forward to. The people who go to that event will be able to read along to the Nantucket ebook. Uh, and that's going to be a lot of fun. So, uh, a new novel from Miley Duffield, new novel from Buffalo, um, another novel that, uh, well, not a novel, nonfiction work that I can't say too much about right now. The Ferret Grover Station. And I, if you can believe it, uh, I have a couple of my own, but I won't bore you with that right now. So those are some of the books that we've got coming out. Uh, you can expect a lot of public domain works in the coming weeks. But uh, anyway, that's what I have. And uh, and, oh, and Quarter Up, uh, that'll be coming out next week. That's the quickest one. So um, let's just, let me just check again if there are any other, uh, yeah, Twitter here. Nope. Uh, and message in YouTube chat, great new menu look and features. Well, thank you very much. Thanks, uh, everyone, for watching. Uh, it's always fun to share these updates with you, and uh, the best is yet to come, the, the books that can take advantage of these. Sorry. The books that can take advantage of these features. So thank you all. hope you have a good night, and uh, don't, don't burn up in our, our terrible heat wave right now. So yeah, have a good night and a, a good weekend.